Hi. It's been a long time since the last time I filmed, as is customary here. I'm not going to beat around the bush. I recently acquired from Sephora a decent little haul. There's a lot of blushes. There's a lot of lip products. We also have the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Shaping Serum and new Patrick Ta highlighter, as well as a couple of goodies. Oh, it almost slid out of the unicarton. Some goodies from Lethal Cosmetics as well. I finally picked up the Mellow Grove palette. I've had my eye on it for a long time. So that's what we're playing with today. It's a little, a little makeup haul and, and try on situation. And since I always do my eyes first, we're gonna start by delving into this palette, which I'm super excited about. I've had a love for Lethal Eyeshadows for a while. I have a bunch of their single shadows in my collection, but I've never gotten a uh, palette from them. Like, a palette that they put together instead of me just putting together a BYOP of a bunch of their singles. So I'm super stoked to try this out. Let me go in with what has been my eye primer of choice since I bought it at the end of last year. I either got it in December or January, I don't remember exactly when, but this is the only eye primer I've been using on my eyes since I got it. The Divina Prelusion Eye Primer. I think it's specifically a matte shadow primer, but it's good for all shadows. Also, sorry, I'm not really sorry. My hair looks like this because it's like halfway dried. Um, I was thinking about heat styling it for this video, but I'm not going to because I know I'm probably going to have to wash my hair again before I start my work week. So I don't really feel like it's necessary to heat style my hair for today. Um, also, yes, I know. I know. <laughs> I cut my hair again <laughs> and didn't notify anybody outside of posting one Instagram story about it like a week after the fact. And now the first time you're seeing it here, it's unstyled. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I just took the shade Whisper and basically worked it from crease up to brow bone. So that was Whisper. And now I'm gonna take the shade Tranquil on the same brush, just kind of lightly fluff it right over where the natural shadow kind of forms right there to make sure I'm in frame. I, since it's been a while since I started filming and I had to replace my ring light that I've had since 2020, that was sad when that finally died on me. Um, kind of lightly feathering it upward. It's been really touch and go. I think that this ring light I've got now can be great, but also, um, is kind of really irritating in a lot of ways in the way that it's like how you put it together and it's designed and whatever that makes me kind of go like, why did they do this this way? And also the pictures are like fully false advertising for it, but like I figured it out somewhat. Um, <clears throat> let me be mindful of my vocal fry. Um, <laughs> I really want to have like a nice soothing voice <laughs> when I'm doing videos like this because I'm like people will if they're watching this will want to have it on to like relax probably and my voice is the least relaxing sound in the world and I'm so sorry I'm so sorry to y'all okay we've got a decent transition going let me go to a I'm using singe brushes by the way I have singe eye and face brushes they've been my brushes of choice with a few of my old faves in the mix as well. Since I got them either at the, uh, I think it was actually after this year, it was in like the early part of this year, I got the face brushes. Yes, I started with the face brushes. And then I liked those so much, I was like, I'm gonna pick up the eye brushes cause I need new eye brushes anyway. And their face puff, this little like velvety triangle puff. I swear. Tools, you do not have to spend a lot on tools, but having really good tools can make even the shittiest makeup look great. Like, I swear, 
Not that I have a lot of shitty makeup. I'm really kind of picky about my makeup. But having these two, I swear, having these brushes as my tools of choice now has legitimately improved the application process of my makeup. I swear my makeup just looks better since I got these brushes. So you go, Singe Beauty Angel Angelica, you did that. Uh, if you haven't tried her brushes, or honestly, even if you just get the powder puff, because this powder puff is fucking amazing. <laughs> this powder puff is amazing. The best one I've used to date. So, you know, congrats, Angelica. Highly recommend uh, Singe Beauty tools if you haven't already tried them. I'm going to go into the shade Sway and see how that treats me as I start to deepen up this outer corner. I probably just tapped that off too much, actually. Okay, there we go. Anyway, I was talking about my ring light. I had to replace my ring light. I'm figuring it out. I think it's good. It'll work <laughs> for the time being for now. Um, and I'm just like trying out different lighting. I have my window open on my right here. So like the lighting is different. I'm sorry if it doesn't look good. I'm I'm figuring. So I feel like I want to do it different than I have been and I want to incorporate more natural lighting. So we're trying something a little different today for our first video back in a long long time. So so far these mats are behaving exactly the way that I expect lethal mats to. They're kind of, they're not super pigmented straight out the gate unless you really, really load up your brush. Um, but what I like about them is that they are sheerer. They're a more sheer shadow formula and then you can build them up as you so choose to suit your preferences with eyeshadow. Um, and they just build and build and build and build. <laughs> with no issue, um, and obviously they blend quite effortlessly as a result of being formulated that way. So I have just always really had an appreciation for Lethal's matte. They're so different, I think, from a lot of... And keep in mind, when I say sheer, you're probably thinking of like shitty, chalky um, matte shadows that just kind of disappear on the eye. That's not what I mean. You can really see, I think, as I blend these and layer them up. Pigment's still there. It's not that they're not pigmented. It's just they're not like hit you in the face kind of super saturated pigment, which I think is what a lot of people have come to prefer out of matte eyeshadows, um, particularly just with the, the kind of matte shadows that we're used to seeing on the indie eyeshadow market. My voice sounds terrible. I cannot stop noticing it. I'm so sorry. Um, with the abundance of super pigmented matte shadows on the indie eyeshadow market, it's nice to have mattes in your arsenal that aren't like that. Like, if you kind of think about eyeshadows in ter as, like, types of paint, you've got, like, Blend Bunny is acrylic. It, it is. I, I kind of want to describe them as like a, a densely pigmented kind of formula. And then you have ones like this that are more like watercolor, I guess, is how I would put it. I need to soften this edge a little more. Hang on a second. I have a, I have a vibe in mind for today's look. We'll see how much I stick to it. I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm, we're playing around a little bit. I'm going in with an even more precise, fluffy, creasy brush and picking up the shade Opulence over here to even more deep. Oh, I like that. These are kind of like, um, I don't know how much the difference between them is going to pick up on camera. I've got these two and the reddish shades here. They're like a wine toned kind of red, which I really enjoy. This color story just really has spoken to me <laughs> since 
they released it since I saw since I saw them start posting about it. I just think this palette is so gorgeous. I'm a big, 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 big fan. I like generally the combination of pinks and reds with greens. Um, and I feel like we've got a really nice mix of like grungy colors with like spring colors that you wouldn't necessarily think go well together, but they're giving very like carnivorous plant. I just, that, that, I like that vibe. Anytime I see a palette that combines these kind of tones, um, I'm all about it. The Kaleidos Flower Child palette was a transformative experience for me, even though the quality of those shadows wasn't really there. I still have that palette. We might have to revisit it in a video. I feel like I want to do a video where I use a bunch of products I forgot about or just don't really reach for anymore. Um, the more recent Unearthly Devour palette I've been loving. Um, how had I not tried Unearthly Shadows before that point? I don't know. I think it's simply because even though they've come out with a lot of really beautiful palettes, there were a lot of them with color stories that just made me go like, I'm not going to use enough of those shades to justify having that, but it's a beautiful palette. Like, I could <laughs> look at unearthly palettes and go like, that's beautiful, but I don't need it. Um, and then Devour came out and I was like, that's it. That's going to be the first palette I get from them. That's going to be the one. And I love when that happens. And then I actually wind up really loving the product. I think unearthly shadows are so good. I think that color story is so beautiful. And this is kind of giving me like that similar kind of vibe, but more like light spring and very like pretty. Like this is a really pretty palette. So I'm digging it a lot so far and it is performing exactly as I would expect. And it's beautiful. So there's that. Now I need a different brush because I think I want to pop that deep brown shade in my outer corner just a little bit as our final kind of deepening shade. I'm gonna use Quiver, which is almost, it's like, the, it's the deepest matte shade and it's almost like a, a deep plum. I think it, it's like a dark brown with a plum undertone. I'm just gonna pop it on and see in real time now what we're working with. But it's, it's very much like a plummy, kind of purpley deep brown. I'm taking this green matte and I'm kind of tapping it over the edge of that brown. This looks got a lot going on. You gotta, we are just trusting the process. And then I think we're going to start moving on to the base because... The way that I do my makeup is I will do my eyelid mattes, <laughs> base, lower lash line, and then typically the last, last thing I kind of do before putting on mascara, because mascara is usually the last step in my routine, is I put shimmers on my eyes, um, because I have a tendency to crease, so waiting as long as possible to pop my shimmers on is just better for me. Okay, so I have a lot of boxes to open up. I should have opened stuff before I started filming, but it's fine. First and foremost, let's get into this shaping serum. Oh, that actually reminds me. Hang on a second. Sorry, I forgot. I wanted to pull out trusty little skin enhancer to compare these two because I think essentially based on everything I've seen the vibe I'm picking up these are essentially very similar products just different formulations like I feel like this is supposed to be a liquid version of this um but we're just gonna see right now so first of all I want to compare the shades and the textures so you've got the classic soft sculpt transforming skin enhancer one of my cream bronzers of choice, although I, act, I use it for a very specific purpose more so lately that we will get into. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit. It's a very balmy, light and silky 
texture. And it is quite sheer and glowy. Absolutely beautiful 10 out of 10 product, highly recommend. Now this guy, we're going to see Hello? Oh, oh god, a whole bunch of it just pooped right out. <laughs> pooped right out of there. Oh, it's a very different color. Oh, <laughs> I didn't really give that first swatch a very good chance. Hang on a second. So that's the skin enhancer up top and this big old... <laughs> so much fucking product came out of there. That was insane. Okay. <laughs> this is not going the way that... Oh, you see, actually, though? This warmed up quite a bit after I blended it out. That tends to happen on me. I don't know why. I have plenty of like cooler toned bronzing options, co really cool toned contour shades that just warm right up on my skin. I don't know what that's about, <laughs> but it's fine. But there's those two. I know this product, based on other demos I've seen, is quite sheer. It just looks like that because a whole bunch came out <laughs> when I pumped it for the first time. But I really wanted to get a feel for the texture of it and how the shades compared. And thankfully, shade-wise, I don't think I have duped myself, which is great. I hate it when I do that. Uh, texturally, this is this does just feel like a serum. Um, it feels very lightweight. So now an interesting thing about this as well is the packaging. So it comes with a pump. Oh, I'm stupid. <laughs> Hang on a second, because it also comes with a fucking doe foot applicator in there, which is what I should have used to do that swatch. Okay. Okay. Give me a second. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now... Oh, it's much... Okay, the shades might actually be closer than I thought. Motherfucker. <laughs> Let me blend it out. Or rather, in with my finger a little bit. Ring light might be totally blowing it out a bit. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm getting a much better feel for it now. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, yes, it is quite sheer... I would say if the if the skin enhancer is sheer to begin with, this is like sheerer than sheer. Like this is the Makeup by Mario response to the bronzing drop craze that has been going around, but we already knew that. I do find it interesting that so much of the marketing has been marketing it as a liquid bronzer because I don't think that's necessarily the case. Like I said earlier, this is a great cream bronzer. It is one of my, it has been one of my cream bronzing products of choice. It works beautifully on its own for that purpose. But the way I like to use it, it it's kind of meant to be used as more of like a finishing balm. <laughs> That's why it has that super balmy texture. The undertone of it, it looks quite warm on me, but it also has this real rosiness to it. It's kind of like a bronzing, blushing, highlighting in a way, product all in one. So the way that I like to use this product more so recently is in combination with other cream bronzers and blushes. What I'll do is I'll do my cream bronzer and my cream or liquid blush of choice, and then I'll kind of use this to blend in between the two to make sure everything is really melded together. I have a really nice seamless gradient going on. Really beautiful product, multi-purpose, gorgeous, perfect. You can wear it on an otherwise bare face. You can use it in combination with pretty much any makeup products of choice because it is that really light, silky emollient texture. Everything, it, all, it just kind of melts really beautifully into anything. I feel like this guy is meant to be used in a very, very similar way. It's just in a liquid form and I'm very, I'm, we're going to test it out a couple different ways today. And the first way I'm going to actually, I'm going to apply it right now to my bare skin. Uh, Cause I feel like a lot of people would reach for this kind of product to wear on an otherwise bare face, like a no makeup day when you just want a little hint of something, you know, so I'm going to blend it on my cheekbone. I need a mirror. Where's my palette? There we go right on my cheekbones, on my bare cheek. I don't have any makeup primer on, so we're going in on just skin 
prep. No extra primer or anything. And I'm gonna dot it on pretty generously because my understanding of it is that it's quite sheer. So I'm gonna blend it in with a brush on this side and then we'll do a sponge on the other side and see what happens. Oh, okay. I don't know, mm, lighting. You feel me? Like, <laughs> that just kind of melted right in with very little effort. I think I can definitely see it more in real life than you guys are able to on camera, but like with the light right on it. Okay, because with the sponge, you're generally going to have the issue of a sponge just swallows product. <laughs> That's what it does. So with a super sheer product like this, a sponge is probably not going to be your application tool of choice because it's basically going to blend the product away into nothing, but we will double it up again and see. I'm going to put my foundation over top of this so it doesn't super matter how this winds up turning out. Um, but I just wanted to see how it blended and behaved with different tools on bare skin. This is a product that I'm definitely going to be testing in a myriad of different ways over time. So this is just kind of a first impression demo, but I feel like I like that um, because it is not so different from a product that I already loved. So <laughs> maybe I'm not the person you, whose uh, first impression thoughts you want to hear about it, but I'm picking up the vibes so far. I'm going to go in and pop my foundation on now and then we're going to apply more of it over top and see what more we can get out of it. Obviously we've got different ways to, you can literally apply it with your hands, mix it in to a moisturizer, use it like you would any kind of bronzing drop. I think I'll save that for another day because um, I don't really need to have a bronzed base right now. But uh, what I will do is I will pop my foundation on. I'm just gonna use the Makeup by Mario one. Um, and then we will apply more of this over top in much the same way we just did. Just now we'll be testing it over foundation instead of under. All right, I just applied a very light layer of foundation. And let's repeat our test, shall we? I think what I actually wanna do this time is pump the product into my palm. Oh, good lord. <laughs> a full pump is a lot. It's a good thing that this shears out so much. I'm going to go in on this side with my brush once again, but I'm picking it up out of the palm of my hand and basically priming the brush with the product before I go in. Make it nice and close, actually. There's a chance that my ring light is completely washing everything out, and I'm sorry about it, but... I think that's beautiful. I think it behaves very similarly to the skin enhancer. I will be interested to kind of test it out in the same way that I use the skin enhancer, which is using it in co combination with another bronzer, kind of as a blending product in between bronzer and blush. Like, see if I can actually use it in the same way. But yeah, I feel like what we're looking at is another 
very multifunctional. Um, bronzing product, just in a different format. I can definitely see this being a product that a makeup artist would love to use. I can absolutely see that. I was going back and forth about whether or not I also wanted to pick it up off the palm of my hand with the sponge because I don't see much point to that, but I think you should definitely be able to do what I just did with the sponge. It's just, it's obviously going to apply different because a sponge just applies things differently from a brush. So I'm kind of picking it up, dabbing it in, and I'm just going to go right in. What you might want to do is kind of roll it on if you're doing it this way, but that's not typically how I roll. <laughs> so I'm just quickly, lightly pressing it in. I'm happy with this. I think I'm going to leave it at that for now. I'm not going to take it on the center of the face or anything. I dig it. I dig it a lot. I'm going <laughs> to... I have a harsh edge happening here. I'm going to blend over. But, um... I feel like I like that. I feel like I'm going to get a lot of use out, out of that. Especially since we can see the pan in my skin enhancer growing larger and larger. The dreaded day will come eventually that I run out of it, but at least I will have my favorite cream bronzer as of right now, which is the Vive cream bronzer. It's, it's so good. And now this, uh, to take care of me whenever I do eventually run out of this guy. I think essentially what it comes down to is if you prefer cream products, you should get this. And if you prefer liquid products, you should get this. Bearing in mind that I do think ultimately this formula is more sheer than the skin enhancer. So if you're looking for more pigment, bearing in mind that this is also quite sheer, it's just not as sheer as this. It's kind of up to personal preference. I'm liking them both. I'm really liking this so far, but obviously further testing is needed. So we got through that. I think that was a pretty solid first impression demo of that product. Now, I have three blushes here because I like to overwhelm myself. Let me get everything open really quick. Blushes. So first and foremost, first blush I have to talk about as I'm getting everything open is also is a product from Makeup by Mario. He came out with three new shades of his cream blush sticks, which I think I've mentioned here before. I know I've mentioned it before. I don't know if I've mentioned it specifically here before. The cream, the soft pop blush sticks from <laughs> Makeup by Mario are my favorite cream blush formula. They are the best. They are so, so good. Highly recommend. I almost picked up all three of the new shades, but I refrained. I reined myself in and I picked out the one of the three that I felt would be the most unique to my collection, and that is the shade pomegranate. It's interesting. It's described as a berry, but it's a very, it's a red toned berry. I feel like whenever I see a shade of blush that's described as, oh, now I see it as a berry, it's very purple. It's almost plummy, right? Like I think I have, I definitely have one, maybe two. No, I think I just have the one other like berry toned blush and it's very, very purple. This is more like Oh, that's gorgeous. It's like, oh, that's beautiful. It looks like a much more kind of saturated red on camera. I would like to <laughs> put out there. In real life, it is, it's like, it's like a, a pinky red. It's almost like a, like a garnet kind of shade. It's beautiful. It's definitely giving pomegranate. I'm really loving, I'm really feeling like red blushes like red tones for summer but like a not like a bright <laughs> maraschino cherry red more like more like a kind of understated deep <laughs> kind of like dark cher cherries and, and pomegranates kind of 
kind of red, just kind of like varying hues of more like blue toned red. And then I also, my first product from Lawless, I picked up one of the new cream blushes, the Pinch My Cheeks Soft Blur Cream Blush from Lawless. Yeah, this is the first product I've ever gotten from them. I thought it would be one of their lip glosses that would finally get me. I totally, I had like the uh, mini of their plumping lip gloss in my cart that I eventually took out because I was like, you have plumping glosses on hand right now that you need to work through. But uh, this blush, for whatever reason, there are so many blushes on the market right now and I feel like a lot of them are touting this kind of like claiming to be blurring kind of thing on the on the skin so i'm very interested in that i picked up the shade angel it was between this and there's another like kind of deeper cool toned mauvey shade oh i can already tell you i really like the texture of that it's like light and silky and melts and apparently it's supposed to dry down to a, a soft blur kind of soft matte finish. I feel like it looks very, on my skin, once again, it has warmed up. So it looks a little different than it did, than it does in pan, but I don't know, man. We will just have to see. I'm very interested in that. And the last thing is the blush that I think is gonna be the blush I use for today. Um, I was thinking maybe I might combine two or all three of, of them for this look, but I think with the eyes going on, this is gonna be the best bet. I got one of the blush filter liquid blushes from Huda Beauty uh, in the shade Strawberry Cream, because it was the shade that spoke to me the most. Very interesting little applicator. Are you focused? I'm gonna assume you are. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I love that shade. Okay, so these are our blushes. I feel like I did a good job getting as as much variance between tones as I could with these new blushes. Cause it's not like I needed any new blushes, but I feel like we've got a good variety here. So I think this is gonna be the one I use today. Any products I don't use in this video are obviously going to get used in future content. Like we will, we will get my thoughts on them. But this is a formula I know I love, <laughs> just in a new shade. So we'll put that off for another day. We'll put the Lawless one off for another day and we will just pop on this dude from Huda Beauty. I don't know how much time I'm gonna have to work with these after applying. So let me just get the product on and blend. Oh no, I did not. I'm so dumb. I, oh, I can use this one. I was gonna say I didn't wash the my usual blush bruh. It smells like strawberry. <laughs> oh, I like that. Okay. Sorry, I just got so distracted. It just hit me out of nowhere how much that smelled like strawberry. Oh, I like that. I'm gonna blend it right up into my concealer so I don't have a harsh line right here. Blended in pretty effortless. It pretty much perfectly mimics the natural flesh of my cheeks, so I've got that going for me, which is nice. And again, it's it's supposed to be glowy, but as, apparently this is also supposed to dry down completely, have like a powdery finish on the skin, but it still give you that glow and ultimately have like a filtering effect. We'll see how this dries down after I have blended out my other cheek. We'll see how it's looking before I put powder on and decide for ourselves, but I think that's really beautiful. Another thing is it is warming up in this room because I can't have my AC on while I'm doing this because it's too loud. So that is probably also adding to our very flushed <laughs> look overall. Hopefully I can get good pictures in this makeup before I sweat it all off. That's all I'm saying. It blended really easy. It's quite pigmented. I'll go around the edges with my foundation brush <laughs> to fix this that's happening right now. But like, yeah, that's beautiful. It's, it smells so... Get, hang on. Because there were a number of shades actually that I knew I could reasonably use in this formula that were very cute. This was just the one that made the most sense to me to get right now. But there's one that's called Cotton Candy. So now I'm like, does that one smell like cotton candy? Cause this one smells like strawberries. Mmm, 
Oh, I love that. That is a fun, that is a fun little product for summer that I don't, I'm so stoked about that actually. Okay, let's set with powder. And then we have a controversial one <laughs> to go in with. I'm actually really nervous about it, but let me get my face all set and we will get into that. All right, we are set for the most part. Obviously we're already quite glowy. I also smoked out my lower lash line with most of the same matte shades that I used up top. I think everything except the green matte wound up on my lower lash line. And now let's move on to highlighter. <laughs> These have been causing a bit of a stir, haven't they? I got the shade Baby because that seemed like the shade to get. I love a pink highlight. So <laughs> we're gonna see how this goes. I, I, I have seen <laughs> some mixed reviews about this product, but we're gonna see for ourselves what the deal is. Patrick recommends using it in his typical Patrick way, which is powder first, cream over top. Um, and I think for this, based on what the reviews I've seen, with this particular, he also says you can use it the other way, cream and then powder on top. I think with this particular formula of his, because from, my, let's, let's just swatch actually first and see. It is very essential. You can barely see it there. This is the powder up top and this streak of wet shine underneath. Oh, thank you lighting. There we go. That second streak underneath the very wet looking one is the balmy cream. It's not a cream. Here's the thing. Patrick's well known for these duos and so I can understand him wanting to stick with that kind of... I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but you know what I mean. Uh, stick with stick with that idea, but this is not a cream in the way that the cream products in his other duo products that he's so well known for is. This is very much like our good old buddy skin enhancer, a balmy product. So I can understand also then why it would be preferable to use this over top instead of as a base, like you would with a normal cream highlight. Because of the balmy texture, it's probably gonna make powder break up a little bit if you try to apply it over top. So I'm gonna go in with the powder first. My other understanding of this product so far, there I am, is they're quite frosty. Obviously I'm very glowy to begin with and I don't want a lot of highlight. And I did think based on what I've seen from other reviews of this product, going in with a lighter hand is gonna be preferable or it's gonna to be too much too quick. So let me just sweep my brush through there, tap it off a little bit, and I'm just gonna apply it like I would any highlight. Okay. I do also think the marketing on this was weird because once I started seeing people like actually use it in demos and stuff, when you looked at the way it was marketed when it was being announced and teased, everyone had a very like glass skin, super editorial glow. And I do think this is again, a very makeup artist oriented editorial kind of cheek product. Um, but everyone was so, 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 so blindingly glowy. Um, and I don't think that's actually the effect you're going to get from this. <laughs> Uh, based on what I've seen and what I'm seeing now, it's going to be a very pretty highlighter, but I feel like the thing about this product that has everyone, or at least a lot of people, very frustrated with it is you have to use it in a pretty specific way to get the most use out of it. Um, and that can be annoying because this product is $40. So... I feel like a lot of people didn't feel like they were getting what they bargained for when they picked this up and I totally, I totally 100% get that. But this is what we're working with right now. I 
think pairing it with a pink cheek was definitely the right way to go. Although I do think this would also have worked beautifully over top of either of the other blush shades that I picked up, but I do like it over top. I have some left over on my brush here. Let me just tap it on the highest points. I do think pairing it with the strawberry, the strawberry cream blush from Huda Beauty was a good call. I am digging it. Is it blowing me away? Not necessarily, but it's beautiful. So the powder, I kind of wish, I have this thing with Patrick Ta every time, with the exception of the blush duos, which very much makes sense to me, and I think are really well thought out, well executed, and there are so many shades. I only have one. I have, uh, I don't remember what the name of it is, but it's like a, it's like a watermelon kind of shade. It's a very vibrant one. She's vibrant. Wow. That's the one I have. Um, beautiful. I wish I had more shades in that formula, actually, because the blush duos make sense to me. With like the the bronzer kind of duos, I'm like, eh. And then when it, with like the found, the foundation one was weird. It was like, eh. And with stuff like, it's like, I really wish, although the blush duos makes, I kind of wish that was just the only product of his that came in that format. When it comes to stuff like this, I'm like, I wish you had the option to just get the powder. Because he also has blush singles, too. He also offers blush singles. So I don't understand why there aren't also then bronzer singles, highlight singles, like the option to just get the powder highlight if you don't want the weird balm um, or like you should you should be able to get the um, foundation cream and the finishing powder or a setting powder individually of each other um, instead of having to have them both in a compact like it it's just interesting to me the way that they have held on so much to this format for their products I feel like it does them a disservice in a way. So now with the, I don't know what's the best way to apply this, but I'm scared. I'm, I don't want to ruin my makeup. Oh my God. I think on one side, oh Jesus, <laughs> one side, I'm gonna, um, okay. On my bad side, I'm gonna tap the balm over top at like the highest, highest point of the cheek with my finger. <laughs> oh, that's too much product. Let me just work that out a little bit. Okay. We'll see if this even makes a difference. Another, again, I'm wearing my hair down. I probably shouldn't with this highlighting balm on, but I'm not leaving my house, so I'm not gonna stress about it. Okay, okay. Here's the thing. I'm working in very sheer layers as well. I'm applying this product the way that I normally typically expect I would. And I cannot honestly tell you, I'm tapping and rolling it on now a little bit extra, just a little bit, um, if it's actually adding anything to my look. Like if I, like I don't necessarily feel like this is helping me achieve a glow I couldn't otherwise, or that it's actually kind of improving the look of the powder highlight underneath but that is pretty I'm a highlighter girly is the thing I like when it comes to products like highlighter specifically that they're not all created equal because I like to play around I'm picking it up with my finger again I didn't mean to do that I'm gonna go in on this side with a sponge I'm gonna pick it up a little bit on my sponge I'm nervous <laughs> I'm very nervous. <sighs> okay, anyway. I just said I like to play around and I'm like scared. Anyway, um, let me get my sponge. So this is with the balm and without, bearing in mind that my lighting is wacky. <laughs> Pick up a little bit. Oh, you can almost kind of see that that balm is like pink. <laughs> on the sponge. I couldn't see it on my skin. On my skin it just kind of looked like a clear balmy product. I think it's just pink sparkle. Or I think it is like... I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> this product is weird. Okay, anyway. Gently, gently, gently dab it on. Applying it with a sponge 
You can obviously do it with your finger like I just did and it's fine. But applying with your sponge with this particular product, I think is gonna be your best bet because what does a sponge do? It eats up product. So it is going to help you kind of apply a sparing amount and just kind of smoothly top off your situation. So it actually makes it a lot easier to not disrupt product underneath. It's beautiful. It is. Is it the most practical <laughs> highlighting situation? Probably not. I think you really have to be like that girl <laughs> and just be like popping on products like these and putting your hair up in that super snatch slick bun and go and have your lunch at Erewhon because uh, you're not like me and you don't postmate your Erewhon. I mean, I'm not mad at it. I'm really not. I'm not mad at it. I'm not gonna invalidate anyone else's experience with it. If you tried this highlighter and you hated it or you're just not interested in getting it because you know it's not going to suit your needs, it's not the kind of highlighter that you prefer, I'm not gonna sit here and try to convince you you're wrong or you need it. Because if I'm being honest, I don't feel like I need it, but I'm also not mad that I got it. I wanted to play around and I did and I'm glad I did and I will definitely obviously keep testing it out and I do think it's going to serve me well going forward. I feel like this is a product I can really get behind. It's just I feel the same way about it that I feel about most of the products from Patrick Tall that I've tried at this point. Like I have two of his eyeshadow palettes and like they're just fine. They're not worth 70 bucks a piece. They're just fine. Um, so eyeshadow is definitely not what I ref uh, refer you to if you were looking for products from Patrick Ta to pick up to try out. Um, the foundation situation, the cream foundation with the finishing powder situation, I liked it for a time. I think it serves a purpose for, I think with all of Patrick's products, it's like there's a time and a place, you know, it might not be for your everyday. With some exceptions, again, the blush duos and the the bronzer duos, sure. But something like this, I'm just kind of like, I feel like this suits a very specific kind of person or a person like me who knows that not all highlighters are created equal and doesn't particularly care. I was concerned that this was going to ruin my makeup based on everything I've seen about it so far. And uh, it didn't. And I'm very glad, and I am excited to keep playing with it for sure. But like, do you need it? Most likely not. Jury's out as of right now. Much like with any of these products, I loved this blush. That camera battery was worth less of a shit than I thought, cause it, it died without even, it, it was so weird. I thought my camera was dead. <laughs> I thought my camera was down for the fucking count after four and a half years, and I was really bummed for a minute, but it turns out it was just the battery. Oh, I'm so glad. I can't wait to update everybody on my Instagram story that I was overreacting. I finished my makeup, basically. I finished the eyes. The shimmers are beautiful, of course. I threw on, I have two of their colored mascaras from Lethal Cosmetics. I ordered three. I'm waiting on the third one and also another product from Lethal to get to me. Um, they're coming at some point, but for now I have these two. I have the shade Static, which is like a deep periwinkle, and the one I have on today is the shade Relay, which is a green. I don't know how much you're going to be able to tell, but I'm digging it. I'm digging it. I still have on that Fenty lip oil. Here's what it looks like now that it's kind of settled in. And the last two products I really have to talk about are also from Huda Beauty, two of their lip glosses that everyone was so obsessed over for a minute there. I got the shades Bombshell and Posh, and in the interest, <laughs> I had my AC on because I think part of it too was this camera's old and I think it overheated and the battery just, the shitty little battery could not, could not stand up to what was happening. So that's why I think my camera just shut itself off and then would not turn back on for a while. But I've got the good battery in now, and I think in the interest of finishing this up relatively quickly, I'm just going to 
film some quick swatches of these and we will finish up and move on. That was a good sound. The swatch was a lot messier, but those are both beautiful. I really like the texture. They're definitely thick. I'm wearing one layer and I can feel it. <laughs> they're, they're, they're there. They're very present. They're like a high shine. They've almost got that liquid latex, like lip lacquer feel, but not really, because it, it's like a nice, comfortable, not sticky, not sticky at all, but it's there, it, it's thick. Um, and I'm not mad about it. I'm not mad about it. Similarly to highlights, not all lip glosses are created equal, and I, I actually think that's fine. You guys know I'm just obsessed with hydrating lip products in general. Uh, so that does it for the video. I'm sorry. For how chaotic it was. I know it was like kind of long and rambly. I know that I was taking my time yapping earlier and now I have to finish in a rush because I'm worried about the state of my camera. I'm worried about it turning off on me again before we can say goodbye. But um, also again it's been a while since the last time I filmed and every time that happens it's chaotic because I swear whenever I sit down after it's been a while to film I'm like brand new all over again. It's annoying and I would like to stop it. But here we are at the end. If you made it to the end of the video, please comment down below so I can thank you and also apologize. Um, I hope that you got something out of this. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope maybe these some of these kind of demos were helpful and maybe you have some, you know, insight as to whether or not you want to pick any of these up or if you have picked them up, tell me about your experience with them. I'm very curious to know. Obviously, further testing is required for stuff I did try today, and obviously I need to get into the stuff that I didn't get to put on my face <laughs> to try out in like future looks and videos. If there's something in particular you'd like to see me test out first, feel free to let me know. And that does it. That does it for the video. I'm happy with the look. I think I'm just gonna keep this Huda Beauty gloss on for the remainder of the day. And uh, yeah, that's it. I will do another look with this palette tomorrow. I think and that will go up on my Instagram so if you're not already following me on Instagram links to my Instagram page and any and everywhere I am at on the internet will be down below in the description box feel free to check those out if you care about that and you want to see what I'm up to in all the places I'm really excited about all these products actually I feel like this was a really solid little haul for me personally so stoked about that and I'm excited to keep doing this if my camera allows it. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for taking some time out of your day to hang out with me. Again, I'm sorry that that time was probably pretty chaotic. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you and your loved ones are staying safe and healthy out there and uh, taking care of yourselves. I'm gonna go enjoy the rest of my Saturday. I don't know what day you're seeing this. It's probably a Friday. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Be kind to others, be good to yourselves, and I will see you back here for the next one. Ideally, very soon, and with a more even energy. And hopefully no technical difficulties. Okay, anyway, bye.